What do you think are the most important treatment gaps or, or screening gaps, things that we maybe aren't doing as well right now for schizophrenia that, that realistically we can close in the next couple of years? Yeah, so um, with with regards to at least medications as part of the treatment paradigm, I mean, there's uh, you know, treatment with schizophrenia goes far beyond medications, of course. Um, but if, if we're focusing on the actual medications here, which um, is is the point of the the thirty eight thirty one program, uh, patients traditionally have had to make that decision between robust efficacy. Um, and trading that off with side effects. So a lot of the medicines that have um, really good efficacy, as we've you know, discussed, also have side effects, including weight gain. Um, some of the medications that um, are available that have less weight gain potentially compromise some of the efficacy. So um, yeah, as I mentioned, the, the, the reason for the development of this program is so that patients and, and clinicians don't have to make that compromise, that you can offer both um, you know, the efficacy of a drug that's been on the market for uh, close to 30 years in olanzapine, um, but with less of a, uh, a side effect that um, patients are, are concerned about in weight gain. Now, does removing the weight gain um, scenario from it, does that make the job of the psychiatrist and the um, therapist a lot easier just because they have something off the table that they no longer possibly have to deal with when, when they're uh, making a treatment plan? Yeah, yeah, I, I just wanted to say, yeah, you know, um, because I think that uh, the way you had phrased the question, you, you know, um, we haven't seen the uh, complete removal of weight gain. I think you use the term removal, but we've mitigated um, some of that olanzapine weight gain. Um, and uh, now I'm, I'm forgetting the, the second part of your question. Could, could you repeat it? Um, does it make the, the job of the therapist and the psychiatrist a lot easier to um, develop a treatment plan? Yeah, so, um, you know, at the end of the day, there's multiple medications available to patients and clinicians, and that needs to be a decision that's between the, the provider and, and the patient. And, um, you know, we completely believe in, in, in shared decision making and inform, um, hopefully, um, by mitigating some of that weight gain um, that we know is a concern to, to patients. Um, and, and to clinicians and healthcare providers as well, as uh, weight gain uh, increases in weight circumference can have um, you know other pro you know problems beyond just cosmetic issues of weight gain. Um, that it it potentially makes uh, 3831 a uh, treatment option that would be a good fit for some patients and and uh, clinicians. Okay. Now, while it helps with weight gain, is there any other side effects? Um, that ALKS possibly um, has that would kind of lead someone to pause? Yeah, we report on the common side effects uh, on the Enlightened 2 study in the manuscript that's recently been uh, published, and they include um, many of the same side effects that you see with olanzapine alone. Um, so those would include uh, somnolent sedation, dry mouth, um, with the exception of less weight gain that we see, the side effect profile looks very similar to olanzapine. Okay. And is there any type of patient, either based on age or, or potential comorbidity that they have, um, where this, this treatment wouldn't be an option, where you wouldn't prescribe it? Yeah, so uh, in the Enlightened 2 study, uh, we studied adults with schizophrenia. Um, that were 18 to, to 55 years old. So um, there uh, weren't any, uh, you know, there was exclusion criteria in the protocol. And then ultimately, you know, if the product does come to market, um, you know, the, the, I can't comment on any other, you know, contraindications that it would have. But um, that's the population that we studied were adults with schizophrenia. Mm -hmm.